Hey guys, welcome to Saturday Spotlight. Today we're going to be taking a, a look at uh, Richard Petty's 1964 Plymouth Belvedere uh, by Lindbergh. Uh, this is depicting his uh, 1964 Daytona 500 uh, car, uh, with, which he won, was his first of seven wins of the Daytona 500, uh, which span uh, from 1964 uh, through 1981. Uh, but guys, this one I got in the spotlight today because uh, it's one of my favorite subjects, uh, not just because of uh, because of the NASCAR uh, factor of it, but because of Richard Petty, my favorite driver of all time. Uh, I'd never, I, I have not met Richard Petty, uh, but I know a couple guys that uh, have gone down to uh, to Level Cross down there, and they they know him, and uh, and they just say he's just an, a a great guy. He's what you see. Uh, used to see during the races and everything, and just an all-around great guy. And actually, my dad met Richard Petty a long time ago, uh, in 1965, uh, while he was drag racing. And the interesting story, just a little quick fact here real quick. Um, the Hemi come along, 64, uh, was actually banned in 1965, uh, because it was just chewing up the competition and very fast. And, uh... So Richard Petty ended up actually leaving and went to uh, try his hand at drag racing. And then, of course, uh, I think a lot, most of you guys that are watching probably know the story of that. Uh, he was racing the Barracuda, the 43 Junior, I think it was, uh, and had that uh, mishap. Uh, something broke on the car, and it actually, uh, uh, I think it was uh, killed an 8-year-old boy. And uh, that uh, that really hit him hard, and uh, he, he got out of the drag racing. 66 back to nascar and uh i think they brought the hemi back then in 66 and so on and so forth and uh so that goes uh, but anyway uh this was one of my favorite uh richard petty cars was this uh belvedere uh this and the 70 superbird i think those are my two favorite uh, uh petty cars that he ever raced and now i built this one a couple years ago i think 2020 i built this one so it's three, three and a half years old now, because I think I probably built that like uh, towards later in the summer, but uh, I'll just bring this in close, stop bumping my gums, rambling endlessly here, and I'll bring this in close to you, just show you maybe some of the features, and I'm going to pull this hood off now, because I know it's going to end up falling off. So, uh, here we go guys, we'll just start under the hood here, uh, it's got the 426 Hemi in it, and uh, if you notice it's not painted orange, and that is going by some dated uh, magazine photos of the actual car from back in the day. And it was actually painted this. This is not exact color, but it's the closest I could get it. I don't even remember now what color uh, I used on that. But uh, it was actually that uh, color. It was not an orange, uh, at least at that the time of that magazine. Uh, but anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, this is painted in um, Nason Fast Dry Acrylic Enamel. Uh, it's a it's a B3 Super Blue. Uh, the closest thing that I could find to uh, to a Petty Blue that you can buy uh, without actually getting a hold of Petty's Garage, I think I think you can buy the Petty Blue down there. It's just it's the formula that they they won't release, and and I understand that uh, they got the copyright on that color. But uh, anyways, uh, so that's the closest we can get, and for the most part. Uh, I think it does it justice. There are, because uh, when you look at the real cars, there's some ways just the ways the light hit it make it look a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. But uh, that's what we come up with on this. So, uh, yeah, 1964. Uh, this is the Lindbergh. Uh, and I bought this kit, or actually it was a gift to me for my birthday in uh, in 1999. And I had it, uh, ended up sticking it back somewhere. I hadn't touched it for a long time. And then there, about... Uh, Three and a half, four years ago, I dug it out and said, you know what? Uh, it's time to get it built. Because I actually had acquired a 70 uh, Superbird, Petty Superbird, uh, Johan. I actually built it and I said, you know what? It's time to get it's time to get this one done. So uh, that's how we did that. And uh, so just go around it here again. Uh, the underside, I just painted it all up to match the rest of the body. Got the got the tail light covers there. It's like all that NASCAR, good NASCAR stuff. Front end there. 
And the interesting thing I found out about this, and it's got the full race interior in it. You can see that down in there, sort of. But the interesting thing I found about this is uh, after I had this built, and I'm going to set this back here, Max. I want to show you something real quick. I want to keep the spotlight on the car, but I got a couple things I just thought as an interesting note I wanted to show you. Uh, and that would be, this is the box art from this, from this kit. Uh, Richard Petty's 64 Belvedere by Lindbergh. And the date on this box is uh, right there, 1997. There's that iconic Petty signature. So cool. Uh, so I got this in, in, in 99. Uh, right now it's got my my uh, 64 Johan Cadillac that uh, I think is going to get finished this year because I'm trying to get all my started projects wrapped up. So this is the box. And then I happen to see, this is the Hobby Lobby one day, and say, wow, check it out. AMT has a 64 Belvedere. That would be really cool to build just as a, a plain everyday driver. So I picked it up and uh, got to looking through it. And I see that comes with the Slant 6 or the V8. Really cool. Uh, but anyway, uh, I got to looking through this. And as I was looking at the body, I'm like, man, that looks exactly like the other one mold is everything dimensions and everything the same and then i got to look in the instructions and then this is the this is the cool part and i said man those drawings look familiar they don't really look like amt style drawings and that's when i realized obviously now i'm going to show you this now this is from a ram chargers by Lindbergh, which is basically now this is the sedan body the Ram Chargers, but look at the drawings. Uh, same thing, guys. That's all that is, is that's the Lindbergh molds. Same deal. It's the same, virtually uh, the same thing. Interior goes together the same way. Uh, one interesting note is on the door panels, uh, one side they have the window cranks and the door handles uh, molded in with the door panel material. And then the other side, uh, it's just the door handles and the cranks uh, with no with no interior pattern. All right, here, I'll show you just real fast. Uh, right there you go. There's would be like your race car version, and there's your factory stock version. So uh, pretty cool. But again, guys, I'm not going to dwell on this because I want to keep the spotlight about the actual build. This is not a comparison, but I just did think that very interesting that uh, round two has uh, acquired all that stuff from the past. So uh, very, very interesting, I thought. It goes back out of the way. So uh, so yeah, just, uh, just uh, an interesting fact about that. All right, guys, had to wet my whistle. Uh, now, something about this kit right here. Uh, I got the kit built, and I went to use the decals. Now, they looked great, guys. They didn't look like there was a thing wrong with them. Uh, but I put them in the water, went to put them on the car, and they came apart. So uh, I got off uh, what I had on there so far, but it came off okay. Uh, so I had, now guys, my memory's a little fuzzy on some of this, but I had a set of J&J. &J. It was from J&J, &J, I believe, decals for this. And I put the decals on it, and uh, and I went to clear coat it, and it wrinkled every one of these decals so i tried getting the decals off and it wasn't it wasn't working too well uh with the clear coat especially so what i did is i ended up stripping it i uh, ended up stripping it off of there and got it back down to the bare plastic and this actually had the post right here but in that process one of them snapped so i just figured well i'll just it was a hard top anyway so i'll just uh i'll just take those off so that's the one biggest difference there uh, so what i did is i uh got a hold of mics and ordered a set of the power slide and guys i can't i've said it before and i can't say it enough about the power slide decals uh so nice top-notch stuff uh great selection of stuff over there uh this was uh one of the sets and uh just if you're gonna build one of these even the old johan uh, I recommend highly the Mike's decals uh, for this. It does, it'll do a couple different style of cars, a uh, couple different uh, Belvedere's, uh, but highly recommended. 
Uh, so if you're if you're looking to do that, the only thing that really biggest difference I would see is the 43 on the original uh, actually should have been a little bit more skinny than this. Uh, this is more like a maybe like more like a modern uh, you know 70s uh, style of number. But, but as far as that goes, that's really the only biggest difference. But everything else, you know, you got the Patterson motors here and all that. So uh, just that's how I had to end up doing that. And I said I stripped it and just started all over. So, and then uh, with the wheels, again, kit wheels, I just painted them like a silver and then hit them with a hit them with a, a black wash in there. Just kind of grunge them up. Made a huge difference on that. And uh, whoops, I told you that hood's going to go flying. So, guys, I really, I really don't know that I've got a whole lot of extra. Uh, to say about that as far as that goes uh, but it is one of my one of my favorite kits uh, because like I said I, I love the subject uh, Richard Petty fan and I've actually got plans eventually in the future to do a uh, to do a line of Petty cars I've got the uh, the, the 16th scale I think I mentioned this in my last one uh, the 16th scale uh, 73 charger um, I've got, uh, I've got, actually, I've got decals to do his, uh, 1992, uh, fan appreciation tour car, actually. So I'm going to use an older, uh, monogram, uh, Grand Prix and, uh, build that one. I've got his, uh, the 84, uh, Grand Prix, the monogram 124 scale. So, uh, I want to have a whole, whole fleet of petty cars. And, uh, I thought this was a good one to start. Now I built that Superbird. Uh, the Johan Superburn. I can't remember if I did it first or if I did this one first, but anyway, uh, that they, they was done just about the same time. So I had two really nice ones, uh, from the past there, but anyway, uh, guys, I, I don't think I have, I don't think I have anything else on this one. And it's, it's a good bit shorter than most of them. Uh, some people probably clapping. I understand. But anyway, uh, I think that's it, guys. But again, one of my favorites, one of my favorites in my of my past builds and a more recent build. Uh, so I guess before I just start rambling endlessly, I think I'm going to go ahead and close it out right there. So, uh, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, uh, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. So until next Saturday, you guys have a great day. God bless you and happy modeling.